one game up and see a zillion. Ban a zillion. There you go. Okay, so first ban right off the bat. Now it's probably going to be uh, the pair of junglers as well. Uh, Spence Garen's been you know, playing Graves for so long, though. That was his favorite champion before the nerfs and already showed uh, he will have no reluctance playing that again. Jump right back onto it. Yeah, Silji actually adapting a lot after that first game. Speed, too much speed. Two bans already. Yeah, they'll ban up. away the Karma as well. We'll see if TSM stick to the script here. They will ban away Rise. So again, another very standard, powerful champion. All right, let's see what they top it off with here. Sivir ban. No speed for anyone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there's some speed left. We'll Definitely. have to see. I mean, CLG have already sort of said we don't want to ban away. Hmm popular champions here. They tried that in game one, certainly didn't work out. So maybe another reactive ban after game one here. Yeah, I'm also wondering if they're willing to first pick Kindred. I think they are for Smithy. Um, and so they might just focus on, I would say the Maokai would be a good ban, but they go for the wow. Graves here to get uh, a pinch on the jungle. And uh, now TSM have to think, daring have TSM. to ban Kindred, right? I mean, the thing is, if you ban Kindred, right, then they're going to take the Rek'Sai, and I think Svenskaren just goes Elise. I think they'd be much happier with that. Uh, CLG, I think, might be a little bit scared of the Haunter Maokai. Maybe, but they will ban Kindred. Well. TSM take that away. So an awful lot of junglers banned away this time. Three in total. We'll cut the pull down by one. We saw Rek'Sai before for Smithy. At least the other one you mentioned is certainly open. We'll see what CLG want to take first here. But a lot of the other picks they, you know, didn't want to leave open in game one. They've actually now left over to TSM. I think Zed maybe sticks out. Yeah. Definitely a lot of other power picks as well. So now my question is, is this going to be a top lane first pick? Echo and Maokai are both up. So those uh, people are pretty happy to play both sides of that. Um, so I don't know if that's going to be the focus. The Lucian that you mentioned, maybe they, whoa, with the Elise up. Interesting. Yeah, they take first pick Rek'Sai. A lot of priority on the jungle there. But TSM probably happy to have other jungle picks available. I think banning Kindred, they knew, okay, they're probably going to take a jungler away. Maybe not mm -hmm. the one they expected. But we'll see what they take here. Lucian definitely jumps out, but TSM have two strong picks to make here with CLG reacting very heavily to the first game's loss. Yeah. All right, well, even hovering over the Gragas here instead of uh, Elise, so maybe she does not even show up in the game. But that Maokai we talked about, definitely going to be <laughs> big for TSM. They like to play around team fighting. Maokai, great team. Oh, just kidding. <laughs> Could yep. be could be a mid lane echo. It's still a possibility could of Maokai be. coming through. Echo and Lucian though are the pick, so swapping them up from the tanks they hovered and straight back into more of their solo <laughs> laners here. I think Double Lift should be back on the Lucian after having a player of the game performance on it. But Haunter is gonna mix things up, or like you said, potentially flex that over to Bjergsen. We'll see what CLG want to answer here with picks two and three. Mm hmm. Very interesting. Because if CLG take it, like we talked about a little bit before, the other benefit of the sort of mid-game spike Lucian build with the black cleaver. You shred armor really well on the front line. And so he can stack up Black Cleaver um, on the CLG front line pretty quickly. I think Smithy's going to go full tank Rek'Sai. So I don't know if they're going to have enough damage if they want to go another full tank. Unless Smithy decides to alter his build and actually throw in something like the Titanic Hydra or the Black Cleaver into his own build. But as far as Smithy goes, when he gets his champion, you know, he's one of those center hole junglers yep. that will just commit to full tank and be the front line for the team. Open up Darshan to be a damage dealing champion from the top lane. Ooh. Hopefully for them, try and get some split push Love threat him. going. Last time it's all back there from CLG. 6 they will take Ezreal again, but Aphromoo can go away from the Nami this time. Had the Braum thought about it, and then just at the last second switched over to Bard. A big playmaking champion. Maybe one that CLG can be a bit more proactive on, perhaps. Yeah, people were banning Bard yes. against Aphromoo. Uh, you know, top tier teams in the rest of the world were very scared of it. and. It definitely opens up a lot of playmaking for CLG, especially if they can open up the map. Bard's so good at picking people off. There she is. Yep, TSM do the obvious thing. They'll take Elise, they'll take Braum, and really showing nothing. He still has a flex pick in that solo lane as well, so TSM have plenty of options to work with. CLG going to have to show the rest of their comp here, so TSM going to get a counter pick either mid lane or top. Yeah. Probably mid lane if I had to guess, but... You never know. I like this from TSM. You know, you're threatening an assassin in the mid lane, so you make who he second guess himself. Bjergsen on an assassin, if, uh, even if it is Echo Melee uh, champion who would have to worry about jungle pressure. Um, still very threatening. Gonna make you second guess yourself. You don't want Bjergsen, especially after the performance he had on, on Zillion. Zillion. <laughs> if you can do that with Zillion, you know, what can he do with a full AP Echo? So definitely a threatening um, flex pick here from TSM. They're holding on to. And CLG are just going to have to 
stand up and blind pick it. 10 seconds left or so for CO2 to finish out this draft. What does Coach Zix have in mind? Because they need to finish off this draft. A very late pick for CLG, and All Dark Dawn right. goes we get this. back. Fiora yeah. Vladimir of the Not pick. only the Vladimir, that's extremely strong right now, and we've seen a lot of bands across the world with the champion. Um, you know, because not only with the rework, but also the addition of the Proto Belt enables him to have more mobility. Um, but man, the Fiora lock-in as well. People have been saying, ah, there's been whispers of Fiora's kind of back here uh, with some decent uh, top lane nerfs, and we'll see Darshan's Fiora once again. It was a terror uh, back in the last split before Fiora got uh, her round of nerfs. Yep. Good to see her back there again another season. Always interesting to see what champions make their way back around. Yeah, also funny how CLG, we talked about, oh, at MSI, they showed a lot more versatility <laughs> yeah. in their you know, team fight style that they had been playing, and they've been playing tanks, and yep. people were like, oh, my goodness, they're not playing <laughs> split push anymore. And they're not playing back a, to split push. So much on the, yeah, <laughs> on the lane sauce. But yeah, back to split push here. They're going to have back to back games. We'll see if Darshan has better luck on this one. And it is going to be once again Victor showing up here. This time, it's going to be in the hands of Bjergsen. Hunter will take the top lane Echo. I don't think Echo's going to have uh, too hard of a time with the Fiora. We'll see, though, because mm. Fiora, if she gets uh, some outplays early on the top lane, um, that can really snowball a lane. Definitely a lot of Telegraph CC mm -hmm. from the top half of the map from TFM. And uh, can't QSS Echo. or Ultimate off anymore. That's true. So. Ah, Dashan, so happy. It's one of the big things, <laughs> yeah, why she's coming back. Makes some sense there. Jerks there, like you mentioned, we'll take the victor. So, gonna take this into Huhi this time. He's got Vladimir, a very exciting new champion we've started to see kind of make the rounds in this new patch. We did expect the teams to start of, you know, exploring a little bit more and playing more of these new picks. After a very standard game one, see what you say, you know what, that's not good enough. We have to play something a little different. Yeah, uh, plus I really like Vladimir just as a champion for Huhi uh, because you can get a lot of survivability. You know, he's encouraged to build health now with the rework of the passive mm -hmm. yet. Uh, even more value out of building health, plus the pool and the Zonias, who he's going to be in the middle of the team fight. Now he's going to have some invulnerabilities. Well, we'll see what they can get some. But remember, you can weigh in on Twitter as well and let us what, let us know if you think CLG can win this one and send us to a decider. Update your votes with the hashtag TSMWin or hashtag CLGWin. As always, these two teams, so much fun to watch play. Yeah, especially Aphromu Bard here because mm. they play the style that Bard wants to play into. It's CLG split pushing. Bard can pick people off in any lane as the enemy team's trying to move, you know, from lane to lane. Uh, the problem we have for CLG is going to be, you know, getting to that point. We saw last time TSM right out of the gates gaining an advantages pretty much across the board. So my eyes are going to be on Svenskeren, on this Elise, see if he can make some plays. Rek'Sai is really good um, at countering uh, the early Elise moves because of the Tremor Sense. And if you have vision of Elise or you at least know where she is, Makes her so much less threatening because she really does depend on you know, landing that cocoon and getting off uh, some burst early. Otherwise, she will get out farmed. And it feels like, understandably, TSM have changed very little with how they sort of put together this composition. Double lift back on the Lucian. Victor feels like sort of a similar champion to Zillion as far as like mm -hmm. more control majors, more wave clear going. And then wants to run a very standard pick, and Sven Skaren kind of took the best aggressive jungler <laughs> left in the pool, given that Smithy wanted the Rek'Sai side after three jungle bans. I mean, TSM won game one. There's no reason really to have to change things up. It is CLG that will force the change. They have done so. We'll see if they can impact enough here in game two to force us to a third. All right, let's take a look. First set, will we get a best of three? Will we get an actual three games? Best of three, or is CSM just going to close the door on the defending champions here? I believe the upper limit of games, according to the analyst test for one team, is 54? Uh-huh. If, you, if, every, if, if, yeah, if every, every single thing. one of your matches goes to three games. Well, it has to start here. 54 <laughs> games to dream. We'll see what happens with TSM waiting as we move out onto the rift for this second one. Great to see Darshan back on a pick like Bureau. Who are going to be rocking that Vladimir in mid lane as well? But TSM really came to play in the first one. He did indeed. Aphromoo trying to look for some early gold here. Prox to spell thieves. Ooh. Dashan not hesitating to trade. Very nice from Haunter actually. Just dodging that vital. Smithy and Huhi going to get some poke down onto Svensk Garen. Bjergsen moving out as well. Just looking for vision. They'll trade a few blows back and forth, but everyone's staying pretty healthy. And once again, Haunter baiting it in. Ooh, vital proc. Not quite the side that yeah. Dashan wanted. Haunter's going to be fine though. He's still got 30 seconds to get back to lane. That, that should be fine for him. He should get there. Almost right on time. Let's see if they do do standard lanes. I'm very excited to see them match up once again, this time around with Bard Ezreal. A lot of potential for uh, lasting poke to land there. 
And uh, we'll see how Biofrost handles himself on a melee champion and Braum. Talked about their aggression though. Ignite for both supports this time. Bio was rocking it on the Karma last game. Yeah. Some very high potential for all ins. Oh, these, yeah. With both really? these duos. Really? These guys? Uh, Braum Lucian, the classic. Uh, very early triggering of the Braum stun passive. As we Bard, as we said, a lot of ranged harass they can try and get down. And Aphromoo, we talk about flash moves. Hey, yo! Hey, uh, Aphromoo's been one of the guys who, who loves to go early flashes on Bard to land the Cosmic Bindings and go with that Ignite to try and get an early kill, catch people off guard. Um, see if they actually make it happen this time around, though. We'll have to see, but it is going to be Standard Lens once again. They actually managed to take a camp away, so it looks like they'll just keep that in front of themselves. But once again, have to think the aggression is there for TSM. Afro Moon Sticks, they're already getting chunked out a bit. Nice aggression there from the TSM bottom side. And I think Double Lift might be back for another early level two. And you said it already, all into the name of the game, especially for TSM's yours. All right. Also, I'm going to keep an eye on this at least. Venskaren has the option to go three camps from this red side and go up the top lane to try and gank. Darshan is pushing on the Fiora really hard. He's bullying Haunter. Oh, very nice repose uh, there from Darshan. Yeah, and the Elise has the opportunity to try and go up there. Her level three kit, that's all you need, but... Svenskaren is going to leave Hanser on his own and then head on through with the rest of the full clear. Who, oh, Smithy here. This is something he's done so often. He uh, goes straight for this early ward on the mid lane to try and give Huhi some more safety on the bottom side of the map. He can hover there. Uh, and Rek'Sai is also going to provide that tremor sense. So gets the Scuttle Crab as well, uh, going for his early ward uh, to provide some safety for both his mid and bottom lane. And returns to complete his clear. Have a look in the mid lane though. Bjorkson and Huhi battling out. Good shield there from Bjorkson actually dodging some of that W damage. Seems to be in control of the matchup. And up today with all the mid lane mages that did receive so many changes moving into the summer season. In general though, it feels like Dasha back at home in a 1v1, although Hornsa is currently leading in CS by a few. Yeah, he shoved the lane up, so there's a bunch of CS here. Um, for Darshan to try and get at the turret, and he should catch back up to exactly even if he mm -hmm. gets them all. He got them all. He did it. All right. Dead well done. Even up on that side, but teleport advantage for Darshan in CLG. That's true. Hunter did use already. Went back and got a Doran's Ring, I believe. Does have that corrupting potion from level one already. As once again, TSM's duo. Weren't able to quite get as much damage done this time around, but continuing to play up and aggressive wherever possible. Haunts looking to trade in, but the Vital Proc's in there from Fiora. And of course, Haunts are a few issues, but looks to be again navigating a tricky matchup quite well once more. Mm -hmm. All right, well, jugglers are just pretty much continuing with the clear. Uh, Svenskaren actually walking over that early ward now uh, from Kill G in the top side. So they've been alerted to his presence, and Darshan takes the opportunity to start his recall, go back for his own purchase, and he's going really aggressively here, picking up another Doran's Blade for himself. Really wants to get a hold on this top side of the map. Try and get a split push threat built early on. Even TP's his way back in, so definitely looking to outright win his lane this time around. X Smithy though, caught on his blue buff, and Hornsa actually going to chase him down. Damage is massive there, and Hornsa is going to force X Smithy to borrow away, and that blue buff could go over to TSM here. Darshan tries, but... Svenskaren's already got it. Second game in a row, TSM play high pressure in their mid and this time in the top as well. Able to go for an invade once again. Svenskaren just chasing Smithy out of his own jungle and Hanser taking a bunch of his HP there. Still keeping up his own CS despite the early TP from Darshan. So looks like Hanser is getting the better of the early stages of these lanes in a lot of ways, but he's going to have to play carefully. He's back in the bottom. 6 and Afro, much better start here. Nice binding there from Afro. Gets damage down, but they're able to play up nice and aggressive and just keep the lane pushed in. Yeah, here's the poke from the double range here on CLG. You want to get them under turret first, then you can try and harass them while they're going for CS. So either they miss CS or they take a bunch of damage. All going according to plan here. Meanwhile, Bjergsen was a big part of that invade as well, enabling Svenskaren to make moves like that, um, not allowing Huhi to really collapse quickly, either collapse or lose a lot of control. Oof. These are pretty great fights to watch. Darshan with another nicer post, and that vital almost pops up in time for a bit of extra poke. You can see Haunter is going to have to chug that potion and try and get some health back, because Darshan maybe looking to get hyper aggressive here and at least force some summoners out of Haunter. Yeah, I mean, he's playing really far up in the lane and he's playing pretty aggressively going for these trades. But you have to be careful because there's a balance between going for the trades and actually securing CS. Nice binding Very. there 
Aphromo denies Biofrost all in. Yep. Transcarian even there as well, so CLG shot that down very quickly. Double will not be getting first blood this time around. Another good binding actually keeps the poke down onto Biofrost. This wave might even get pulled back. CLG looking very healthy here, and TSM to say, all right, I guess we have to go back now because that completely flopped in bottom lane. Yep, gonna be able to regain control. Everybody's just gonna go right back to farming here. All right, so this is actually decent for CLG avoiding, you know, early ganks from Elise. But um, as far as the CS goes, pretty even across the board. Only a few uh, strange difference between the leagues. Sneaky in that top lane, though. No. Monster actually used his ulti to get back to lane because he didn't have teleport. It's one of the nice benefits of playing Echo in a solo lane. Who he actually coming up as well. So this could be a dive, but if Smithy spotted by a pink claw, that's gonna cause Huhi back towards that mid lane. Yeah. But nice to see him being a bit more active. Vladimir, not really well known as a Rome champion, but if Huhi could get out of the lane, something he couldn't do in game number one. Yeah, exactly. You could see what CLG were thinking there. With, mm, you know what? He's using his ultimate to get back to the lane. We should try and dive him because he won't have that extra survivability under there. But pink ward's already in place, so that kind of foils the whole plan, and Huhi cancels his roam. Able to CS under turret as well, quite effectively. So he's doing a lot better this time around. He's built early magic resistance as well. So with that cowl regeneration and the you know sustain of Vladimir, it should be very difficult for Gergson to apply the same kind of pressure that he applied last game. Also, so hard to dive Vladimir, yep. right? Especially in the mid lane. So who he? This is a good champion for him. He's just all just wants to be an immovable farming object in the mid lane right now uh, for them and let. Darshan be the one who's really trying to apply pressure for the squad. And pressure is applying, but Hornsa again still taking good trades and keeping up in CS despite Darshan trying to play into him as much as possible. That sheen that he got certainly helping there is Spenskeren. Nick Smithy, we're going to meet once again, but Nick Smithy spots him with the Tremor Sense. Spenskeren, though, looking to start a fight pretty much any time he's in the enemy jungle. Yeah, looking for the invade here. Bjergsen heads down as well. Post level 6 mid laners, you really have to give a lot of respect to the Victor combo. Ooh. Smithy oh. doesn't respect it though, goes in, tries for uh, the secure, but Sven scaren has got smite, so makes that pretty difficult to do. Yep, got the red buff and almost took him out. Smithy forced the bar back towards the Krugs, but he'll keep himself safe for now and first blood. Still eluding both these sides. Is it Smithy actually going to take this down? Spence Karen, though, in the area. Voltas Bylan's going to catch in. Oh. Going to swap in after the cocoon. Bites down. But Smithy may be just able to tunnel out. Collapses that one. Doesn't really want to go too deep. And CLG are collapsing. The teleport's in. But there's the answer from TSM. Dashan instant ulti down as everyone's coming in. Haunts are actually in the middle of it all. But a huge off from is going to move it all in. Haunts are now chasing down. He gets the first ball onto Dashan. Who are now going to get caught out and take the magical journey to safety? But TSM react better once again. Yeah, Smithy tried to bait a little bit there, but TSM just collapsed quicker. Bjergsen is right there. And then CLG fight on the gravity field. They're able to take down Darshan. He uses all summoner spells and his ultimate. That's going to be the Earth Dragon as well for them. And that makes it a lot easier because every objective is still available on the map. Gonna get a lot of value out of this one. Yep. Good dragon to get, they'll pick it up. Is Aphromu gonna get chased out again? Biofrost puts up the shield, sticks a nice arcane chip out from under the Winter's Bite. The TSM once again claim a dragon. Okay, so COG, they're gonna play from behind again. Uh, gonna have to work on their defensive play. Uh, try and defensively ward and uh, be able to react better than that last invade. Nice play from TSM on their side though. Again, impressed that they use the general roaming. Good teleport from Horns to get some in there. Bergson actually has the ghost, which I didn't know earlier, but it would have been pretty mobile. That did also get changed among the many things oh, yeah. that got changed in this patch. So nice, especially for a lot of uh, junglers. Um, definitely underrated. 30 seconds off the cooldown for Ghost has started to show up at least. Um, on some odd champions beside like Hecram, who yep. was one of the only champions that used Ghost before. Just because Flash is so valuable now, decent amount of junglers trying to use it. Just because you can go burn the Flash cooldown of uh, enemy laners and then return much quicker than they can. Hopefully, we got a bit of Bjergsen though, so we will have a check back in with Huhi and friends. Looks like Bjergsen actually up a pretty significant amount of CS, but Huhi gonna stay in lane and try and get what he can. Bjergsen might look to back, but doesn't just yet. Gonna keep the lane pressure up for now. Looks like Huhi. I think that's Spirit Visage first, actually, with that Kindle Gemini's imagery, but it could be just yep. about anything. Uh, yeah, as we said, you know, after the rework, Vladimir encouraged even more to build health. And uh, with the Spirit Visage early, it's going to 
going to be very, very difficult for the TSM squad to kill us. In lane phase, it's a Victor and Elise, all magic damage. You know, even if the top laner comes down and tries to take you out, Hunter's got mostly magic damage now. It does have the team. Hunter's doing work in that top lane as well. Once again, taking winning trades as Bjergsen's actually made his way up to the top lane. He's a pretty creative dive score, but Darshan does not have his repost up. Bjergsen yep. to Ghost in, they'll go in for the dive. Does pop the ulti, but the ulti's down for Victor, and that should be enough for Bjergsen to collect himself a kill as Haunts are up. Does drop Tower Dagger. Yep, no teleport from who he able to try and answer, so oh, the roll. Day. Looking for it. Will that even kill? I'm if not sure. We're gonna find out, it hits him! Oh, oh, does not that. kill. Close though, and he did land it, so. Pretty good shot, but Hanser brushes that one off and recalls easily. Ooh, just get there for spin, but he still goes for the fight. Knock nice up there dodge. from the Umbaro. Next Smith, he's just gonna do damage. Q, he goes in, pops down the ulti. And I don't think that at least can really go anywhere. Spin gonna get burnt out of who he gonna get himself a kill. There we go. Who he actually has a pretty good collapse there. But it's just a drop in the book at TSM still with a very substantial lead. Who he finally makes a, a move for himself though. And Charges up the E fully, you get that slow on it, and flashes in there to try and land it. Then Scarin gets punished, but still feeling very confident about their position in this game. And really punished for the first time in the series for invading aggressively. Aphrom, a good dodge. Takes the magical journey back to the lane and makes sure Stixie is, Stixie is safe. It does have that mana immune building up now, so kind of happy to sit around Aphrom again. Just being annoying more than anything else. But keeping up nicely here this time. Double lift has not had the same snowball in that lane this time. And look at that Smithy actually now starting to invade, but Sven's gonna spot him. Not in oh. time though. Sneaks away the red buffer. Sven's yeah. gonna chase him. Oh! Buffered tunnel. Sven wants it, but I don't think he's gonna be able to chase him there. So close there actually. He's barely getting, missing the cocoon. Oh, Biofrost is getting very Yeah, low. that's aggressive. He gets Dead ignited. Deep. He flashes. The heal might not be enough. Double is gonna try and turn things around, but he's gonna get stunned up as well. Double is so oh. gonna try and turn it out. Does flash out of the way, but Stixa flashes in and nails him with a Q. Whoa! The outplays on bottom lane even up. And Bjergsen wants to come reclaim those kills. It looks like he might be able to get in position to do it. He's got flash still. He's got the ulti as well. This is going to do damage, but CLG will defensively TP in. Bjergsen oh got my. caught by the Tempered Fate, and they'll ride the magical journey in. Good flash there from Bjergsen. Gets him out, but the slow lands in. Bjergsen, though, able to get the Q move speed and run away. Ooh, they almost turned that one around. Teleport there. Okay, so Smithy's going to get right back out. Do CLG want a pressure now? They've had a pretty decent swing here. This is going to be them almost evening the game right back up. Darshan and Haunts are still at it, but Haunts are again winning his trades in the 1v1. Ooh. He's up so much CS in this lane as well. Haunts is going in, looking for the dive in. Darshan pops the ulti defensively. Almost gets all the vitals. Haunts are actually forced to back out of that dive. He's got the ultimate advantage now though, so some more damage on this turret, some more minions denied from Darshan. And once again, Haunter is crushing Darshan in this matchup. Echo, huge lead for themselves. CLG keep picking champions for Darshan to try and become a split push threat, but he's not going to get there uh, behind in lane once again. Let's take another look at this. Binding from Aphrom, who starts it out, and then Bioflash just goes super aggro here. Gets ignited so the heal doesn't get full effectiveness. The Thunderlords took him down, and another Cosmic Binding from Aphrom. It makes it seem like a targeted ability here. Then 6 a goes in, Flash Q. Able to take that one. Bjergsen tries to clean it up, as we know, but um, CLG turned that one around. Yep. Bjergsen doesn't go down, but he's sort of forced to use some summoners and back away. And CLG actually sort of turned things around, still behind in gold. TSM up a dragon and 1500 gold so far, but 15 minutes in game number one was a whole lot worse than this particular game. So CLG has done a great job holding on, and I think most importantly, not letting Double If start snowballing his lane again. Yeah, I mean, they were able to outplay him in the bottom lane, but Double If still has strong CS and he's got his Ghost Blade built. So he has that flat armor penetration, still very formidable force. And DSM still do have the lead. They're making a pretty good Oh. Yeah, Haunts is in actually. Aphromoo is going to get locked up here. Ulti's out, but Six is getting chased down by Haunts. Haunts should just be able to clean that one up, and he's actually going to get greedy. Darshan, though, takes out Double Lift on the other end as Hui takes out Bjergsen in rotation. Haunts are actually still fighting around, but forced to burn the ulti. And Six is somehow oh. still alive. Haunts are going to look to chase in. We'll finally get shot down by the phase die, but Aphromoo stuns up the echo. Haunts are going to go down here as well. And the ulti almost getting in there as Six Mithy takes out Haunts. CLG. Just they're, play the crap they're out of climbing PSA. right back into this one, and there's a dragon available this time if they want to go for it, but they're chasing under the turret. Very aggressive, looking for a dive. Biofrost puts up the door. 
And Spence Garamal back out as well. A three for two trade overall. CLG come out on top. Yeah, I think CLG should just take jungle and try and get... Well, maybe they won't even have enough time for Dragon now. Who he's going to try and zone for this blue buff steal, though? Does zone away. Looks like blue went over to... Afro, I think. No, who he did get it. Excuse me, so... Yeah, oh, it'll happy. be a little bit overreaching to try and go for the drag now. Uh, TSM are respawning after that, so... CLG, they're making a couple steps right back into this game. Gold right back within striking distance, but... After leaving the map, it looks Ooh. like TSM are going to be the ones to grab it. And that is Infernal Drake. The prize Drake. <laughs> and Smithy get in there for a steal. It might be a suicide, but he's trying to scare them. He doesn't have smite, but he will try and scare them away. And that almost is enough, I think. TSM, not enough yeah. vision to try and commit for it. Who he zones them off, and CLG it, might have enough time to It's still low, and CLG wow. slips right back in. So TSM softening it up for him, and CLG going to Drake the Dragon. Looks like Ocean Drake will be up after that, so... Trade of one dragon apiece, TSM with the Earth Dragon, CLG gonna collect themselves an Infernal. TSM, if they had, you know, perfect information, probably able to take that one down, but CLG starting to play definitely more on the front foot here. Able to clean that one out and again, keep the game nice and even. Not out of control this time around, although we've had a very long laning phase. True enough, standard lanes and only the top turret went down. Let's take another look at this. Double lift gets knocked with the Cosmic Binding, allowing 6A to land Almost the full combo there, but Darshan finishes him off in the dive, as we saw, and then just tries to exit from the top side. He's gonna get taken down by Sven Scarin up there for the answer. CLG actually clean up a lot more kills here. 6A almost gonna get out, but man, Hauntzer flashing there. Uh, another cosmic binding from Aphromoo. His bard has been so good for CLG. That's the reason it's been banned an awful lot over at MSI. He's a very, very proficient bard player. CLG getting themselves some much needed kills, and I think Tarshan gonna feel a bit better about the lane despite the fact that Horns are still quite far ahead. 40 CS up with the Sunfire finish, but Tarshan will get stronger as the game goes on. Yeah. CLG again, happy to be in this spot given what happened in the first game. Definitely, it's a new position for Tarshan to be in. Right? He's not really used to being the weak link on the team, um, but right now he is the weak spot for CLG, and something that TSM want to try and take an advantage of. Uh, with Hauntzer having a two-level lead in addition to all the gold he has over Fiora. As of right now, CLG having him uh, just farm in this uh, top lane right there. They've got the tower down, so they're trying to get Darshan some CS. That means that the rest of their team needs to play a bit safer. So we probably won't see all ends here from the duo lane. Um, Huhi, we talked about how easy it is for Vladimir to play safe in the mid lane. And uh, Smithy just continues to ward with the Rex Ion jungle. Um, Smithy's basically a walking radar that uh, tries to put down wards and uh, delay the enemy team. Right now he does get caught on his warding mission, but it's not going to be a big deal for him as he's able to heal up with the passive. And again, going full tank, so very tanky on the Rex side. Getting caught doesn't cost him too much. There is Hui. Starting to bully perhaps oh. as Haunter, though. He's going to dive his way in. 3v1 right now for Hui, but he doesn't dodge the Kakunic. Smithy, though, going to stand and fight as Afro moves in. It's Vince Garrett going to get chomped down, and that Hemo Flex should be enough. Afro able to take him down. But Horns are still chasing in. Now Biofrost moving in onto Hui as they will get the stun down. Damage is good. They'll chain the CC, oh. but Hui is so tanky and does not fall. That bar damage and ignite from Afro Moo. They actually get a kill for CLG and they're collapsing. Dick says here, Ulti's cool, but it's not enough to take out Horns. TSM will live, but Darshan does answer with a structure in top lane. He's very happy that he doesn't have to play against anybody here. The rest of CLG are doing the work. This is a split push CLG, but it's the four man part of the split push that are gaining the map advantage and letting their one split pusher get back into the game. Darshan cleans up some minions, does get the tower gold for the team, and uh, he's very happy for that experience as well. Still two levels down to Haunter though. You can start to see some of the issues perhaps in mid lane as Double If will clean this out as best he can. Because Hui did not have the Zonias when that last fight started and he still didn't die. Two item blood looking awfully strong. Yes, Zonias completed for him now. He's got a lot of playmaking ability. We talked about how Hui likes to play those team fights, zoning for Stick Say, trying to open up opportunities for Stick Say to have high AD carry uptime, constantly getting out uh, DPS. And with the Zonias, with the Spirit Visage, Hui's. Just a menace trying to disrupt inside the middle of the team fight uh, and absorb a lot of cooldowns from the enemy team, plus dealing a lot of damage while he's at it. Well, you can definitely see CLG collapsing well there to actually get themselves the lead, if ever so slight here in this uh, second game here. They're 500 gold up now on TSM. This Haunter wants more fight to Ashan, but the ulti's out. Repose has been used already. So it's guaranteed though to try and 
But imbalance this one, 1v2, can Dashran get out? He's gonna keep moving in, but Haunts is able to take it. Haunter is playing this Echo so well, and they're not done yet. Yes. Uhi moves in for the one versus two, and Aphromoo can find Spen. This is the problem, Aphro's in there, Binding doesn't land, but Spen gonna get taken out regardless. There's that map mobility of Bard that we talked about. Afro gets up there, and again, the Bard for CLG comes up huge. I was just about to commend Hanser for his echo play there. He did something really sneaky because Darshan can see the timing when the parallel convergence is going to land. He actually moves out of his own parallel convergence so he doesn't stun Darshan when the repost is up and moves back in after it's done so that they're able to get that kill. Well, mind game certainly strong with Haunter and he's had a fantastic lane so far. It's 55 CS ahead, looking to knock down this turret. The Icebond Gauntlet should make short work of it. And G pull ahead with that play for a very short amount of time. Uh, Darshan looking to even it up now, though, as you said. Good luck chasing Echo. Wanted to take the turret and gets away, but Blue Buff will get stolen and given over to X Mithy. Looks like Seal do want to open the map up a bit. Who he here? Gonna proxy this wave up and should be an easy turret take for CLG. Again, we've had a long landing phase here, 22 minutes in. Yep. And now finally, a fourth part will fall. CLG gonna even that score at two and two. Quite an exciting second game of the series, I had to say. You know, after Doublelift had a good performance last game, now at his old partner, Aframu, is looking like he wants to make an MVP uh, appearance here, a player of the game, if you will, because man, this Bard is doing a lot of work for them. 303 sitting right now. Highest kill participation of anyone. Certainly on track. It looks like Sticks are also powering up. In general, CLG getting themselves into a much comfier position. And Darshan, again, he is scaling. Still behind Haunter, but should be okay as things move through. And Dragon back up in five seconds. It is the Ocean Drake. See if these two teams do want to fight for In fact, Smithy's already ultied into the pit. Yep, CLG setting up for it really early here. They have a lot of vision as well. It's not just that they have everyone here, but they've got a lot of wards sort of moving up into that blue quadrant of the jungle and true sight for themselves so they're going to start off this dragon yep who he actually tanking it up but tsm i think would rather trade a turret yeah darshan has teleport he's really far away he's taking the blue buff right now so it's just going to be a mid turret there tsm opt to trade uh for that ocean drake good binding from afro but no follow-up there for clg ulti though it should be enough fire frost is going to get ultied up there so it's going in the front line trying to do something Haunter actually going to dive back in straight onto Sticks. A dragon still available next. Mithy's going to dive in for a Haunter. Pops the ulti back in. A double if they were to take out the Rek'Sai. Whoa. CLG don't finish the Drake, and they actually go in for the team fight. CLG opt into that. They tried to catch TSM while they were moving over, and then Smithy, someone makes the call for him to engage. He's extremely low, and they go down. Can they clean up the Drake afterwards, though? Still tanking it. TSM actually going to take TP back in as Haunter's going to make his way down with full up and home guard. Hui caught up there by a stun. Does pop the Zonias, and the rest of CLG may be able to collapse. Cosmic Binding is going to miss as Dashan looks to try and take them out. Repost is good, but he's going to keep Tinder to be chased as Doublelift wants to play cleanup. Has to be careful. Gets stunned over the wall. Hui flashes in to try and take him out, but does not get him. Bjergsen takes him out, and Doublelift somehow lives. Everyone on TSM survives that. What? What a big blooper from CLG. The call's right there. Oh, but they combine Sven Scarab, they're not done yet! Sven's dead, they're not done at all. Sticks taking a chunk, but he gets himself a double kill. Oh my happened. goodness. Afro just gets out as well, but Haunter is gonna shut that down. X Smithy now back in with the ult. He's gonna try and get it done. Afro move, double biting there. The damage is massive, but they're gonna try and keep chasing. Afro barely lives on the back end of Time Winder. And Bjergsen, you have to run, but he gets knocked up. That should be enough, and Darth Run takes him out. It's a bloodbath pastry. It's not even done yet. Now they're gonna go back to the dragon. The scene of the crime, and CLG in the end, looks like they will be able to claim that Ocean Drake after all of that They madness. deserve it. Okay, so this is about halfway through the shenanigans. Who, uh, who he's going to be the one to start it off because he's got the Zonias, tries to group up all of TSM for the re-engage here from CLG. This is a 4 versus 5 re-engage, by the way, remember. Um, and they're going to try and take down double up here. Aphromoo does get the Cosmic Binding before the Flash. And then Huhi flashes in to try and finish him off, sacrificing his life. And at this point, you think, oh, TSM have gotten away with murder. But Stixe follows this one up. He goes in with the Ezreal, gets the flash auto uh, for that kill, and then gets a kill onto Double Lift as well. Arcane shift right into his face. Clean up on the back end, though, as it did last for quite a while. But Ooh. in the end, just a lot of trades back and forth here in the gold again. Still pretty much even, CLG up by 500 gold for now, but... Yeah, this is a scrappy one. Yeah, very much so. 
19 kills in 26 minutes. This is more the pace I'm used to. Yeah, all right. Are you looking forward to a possibility of a third game here? Hauntzer doesn't want to let them have a third game, though. He's going hard on Hui. He's massive right now on the Echo, and Hui's actually struggling to try and get away. The most annoying thing about Echo is that you can't get away from him either with the constant applications of the passive. This continues the beatdown. Yep, and the stun is going to land as well. Even the ulti burn by Hui to try and live. Vladimir has so, so much healing next Smithy. <laughs> Maybe he can turn the tides, he will, but Haunter is a menace. Can't get away from him, but Vladimir can sustain for long enough for our reinforcements to arrive. And Smithy escorts who he away. We're able to get out of there. No more blood will be shed quite yet. Well, don't hold your breath for too long, because I don't think these teams are letting up. Map's really opened up now as TSM have claimed three turrets to seal G's two. But the Baron in play now, 27 minutes in. And of course, there are dragons coming back as well. So, again, a much more even game than the first one. Yeah. See which team can break it open. So interesting how these uh, play out when uh, the split push champion for CLG does not get an early lead and they don't get to try and utilize that in the mid game. TSM here are going to claim their last outer turret. So now they can try and uh, start pushing up the ward line. As of right now, they've got a really nice pink ward line straight down the river. They're controlling that pretty effectively with their true sight. They really have to watch out, though, for the cross-map plays of Aphromoo on this Bard. He has yet to die. He's been the one picking people off. Thanks he does it again. It? The Ignite from oh, Afro claims enough. another. That's four kills on the Bard. He's actually going after Double Lift as well. He's going to eat a face full of calling, though, for it. As Double Lift does get himself out. Did not get tagged by the Tempered Fate. But Afro will not be stopped today. Oh, uh, my goodness. He's uh, stacking up a kill streak for himself on the support as well. All right, let's see uh, valuable bud. how they close it in because Fenskaren off the table here for TSM, so they're just going to try and hold. Rashawn definitely doesn't want to go for any sort of dive. Uh, they don't have much vision. Uh, Smithy's in the area, but he's mainly just protecting, looking for TSM members. And who he actually is committing to split push, it seems like. We saw that Haunter was able to shove him out of the lane, but it's really hard to kill the Vlad at this point. Looks like they actually might go back in for it, but Double Lift gets himself out from under knockup range. Maybe now gonna turn things around. It's Smithy taking damage, but there's the ulti out of Dashan. Great ulti from Biofrost, though. And Dashan's very squishy. TSM are gonna move in for it. Hansa takes out Dashan again. And now they're gonna be on the chase. Who he doesn't oh, have teleport. A. That he canceled it. It followed it. The arcane shift moved in off to face dive, and Six has to run. Aperu sets up the ball over Bjorn sits here. Hansa takes out the Ezreal, and it's Smithy gonna get stunned up as well. Spin Scarra claims that one, and Hansa rampage through CLG, gonna try and finally slay Aphromoo. Can but he Afro claim? Gonna keep running, Afro. I don't think he's getting <laughs> out of this one, but maybe he flashes. Hotsa wants it, and he's actually he gonna up. get away. <laughs> Afro lives. Okay, so if we do uh, collect ourselves after that, there was a who he teleport, but I think he canceled it when they saw they were losing the fight to begin with. And once Darshan went down, CLG decided to cut their losses, and they actually trade a turret for that. So not the very worst that it could have been, but it, a pretty big pickup there for TSM as after the fact, they're able to pick that uh, Baron buff up for themselves. And that is gonna be a huge part in taking this game from one stage here where they're having constant team fights everywhere. And uh, people are kind of running around with, uh, okay, so let's actually keep a track of when the exact timer for the Teleport Word channel, because the first one that comes in is Haunters, uh, and then who he comes to try and answer, but you see there, once Darshan dies, immediate cancel, you know what? We're gonna at least try and salvage a turret out of this one, but TSM quick clean up so much. Haunter here is just on a rampage with this Echo, keeps up the chase, they take down the Ezreal, Smithy's gonna be left for the rest of the team to deal with. And the four-man squad goes for the Baron. That's why they have right now. He was off screen, but they easily take that one down. Wow, Hanser keeps up the chase. And CLG just get one turret for it. Yep. I mean, definitely a strong play there from TSM. Good ult there from Afro, but I don't think there's follow-up here. Who he wants it? Dex Smithy diving in. It's a Hemoth Flake down onto two. Biofrost taking damage in the front line, but Double is dishing it out. Svenskaren does go down on Darshan. It's actually made his way in. Bjorkson is going to fall down, and Bjora ulti will pop us. Who he does give chase. Haunter a little late to the fight now, and CLG turn back around for two. The team fight, and we talked about CLG putting a lot of work heading into MSI, and this time around, they make it uh, work out right here. Aphromoo starts it off. See if they can actually take down the turret afterwards. Haunter, yeah, not even going to sit up around. But man, CLG, great collapse there. We talked about Puhi 
running, being the point man for this squad as far as the team fight. He runs right in there on Vladimir. Whoa! Plus the one's in! Goes for and gets the stun Whoa. down. Plus the ulti out, but the turret still dealing some damage here. CLG though, real tanky on the front end of this one. But might have to back away. Ponsu and Bifrost a little too threatening with the turret there. Yeah. One of the reasons you know, a lot of people have been banning this Vladimir. Huge team fight presence. And uh, Darshan comes in a bit later with the flank on Fiora after everybody on TSM have been trying to use their cooldowns for survival. Perfect opportunity for Fiora trying to come in and clean up with some extra damage. Ooh. What's TSM trying to do with this Mountain Drake though? Because they do have almost everybody except for the two damage dealers. Yep. Gerkson and Double if not quite there. So it's going to take a while to go down. They teleport in though. Afro is also in the area with ultimate, but that TP is going to be finished. Hui! Just straight into the front lines here as TSM gonna look to try and turn around Haunter. Good damage out on the front side, but Xmithy gonna knock him up. Haunter maybe taking a little too much here. Dragon actually still going for TSM as well. I thought we were gonna transition out of this phase of the game, but it's not true! Oh, Afro, good ulti there to the bottom. Hui still taking forward, does not pull out of the way, and CLG do claim the dragon. Dash on in the front side as ultis are traded. TSM. <laughs> we'll stay alive for now, but CLG did get the dragon. All right. I mean, design team wanted more team fights. Uh, implement the new <laughs> dragons. They get more team fights, baby. Constant battling here. And even after that, it, it feels kind of like CLG, you know, have a handle on this game. They're still behind in gold, even though it's such a slight amount. Uh, TSM are still capable of taking one of these. It's all about the setup, though. And so often, the setup has been determined by Aframu uh, in an advantageous way for CLG to start off the team fight. Uh, and once they've been able to get that early footing, it's been hard for TSM to regroup here. Certainly has, but good news for both teams this time is that the game is still very close. Mm -hmm. Only a thousand gold up for TSM, which at this stage of the game, almost 33 minutes in is pretty much nothing. So G will have the dragon advantage, but Elder Dragon actually will make an appearance in the NALCS for the first time this summer. Didn't get to see him last game. Yeah, and as you can see uh, with the updated graphic there, under CLG, three dragons. Um, only missing the air one. Wah, wah, too bad. Oh, <laughs> we don't have a... <laughs> I'm sure they're not too sad about that, but the Earth Dragon is the only one TSM have. So if that Elder Dragon does come up in a minute and a half or so, it's going to have a big priority for CLG. Oh, Avril gets caught! Oh, no! Could he die for the first time? He does! Gets shot down there by Spence Garen, but Bjork's actually getting taken on the other side. Shields are there, though, and he still lives somehow through that all. As Onto is wreaking havoc in the backside. Double it, able to take that next one out, and TSM, they're going to turn things around. Hui, stunned up there. What a swing for TSM here. Afro makes the rare mistake, and it's going to cost them. Hui going to die there as well. Finally goes down after all that healing. And TSM, they claim three lives. They'll get the tower and continue chugging down bottom lane. Oh, yeah. They're going to keep pressuring here. They lost nobody in that team fight. Afro Moon went down before anything happened. So CLG trying to salvage things with a four versus five there, but they just lose two more. And TSM take the inhibitor. Van Scaren on point, as always, with the cocoons. And TSM are going to break that bottom half of the map. CLG going to struggle to maybe fight for Elder Dragon, which is actually interesting because this normally doesn't work this a way. A back and forth game, Phase 3. We just talked about setting up the importance of this Elder Dragon for CLG. Losing their bottom inhibitor is very big because that's going to have a sh constant stream of minions for TSM that give them some extra vision. Even if TSM's wards time out, if CLG start clearing them. Um, yeah, so Aphromo right there, he's walking up. He had his own pink ward, but man, base checks, gets cocooned, and then Bjergsen surviving here with shields on shields and the heal as well going off to keep him upright. Remember, that's a full tank rex size, so Smithy's got very little hope of even finishing off someone that low health, and then after that, it's very easy for TSM to continue the chase. Good stuns there uh, from Braum, able to continue that one, and huge, huge momentum swing here. TSM pull out not only to a map lead with that inhibitor going out, but also the gold lead here. Yeah. Pretty heavy in their favor. Baron, of course, will be back up in just under, or just about 55 seconds. So TSM can also use that bottom half pressure to try and get that for themselves. Right now, they're just trying to demolish some turrets. That'll be the seventh one of the game for TSM, as these tier twos are all dead now. CLG going to have to play defense for a while. Yep. They're going to have to try and hold on here and uh, see if TSM actually decide to set up for Baron or the... Or look for some picks here because they do have Braum and Elise. You know, we just saw what Aphromu did. Uh, that also works if uh, TSM can get brush control. All right now, setting up for setting it. Setting up for it, yeah. TSM just hanging around the Baron area. I've cleaned out all the vision. Once again, hanging out in the bush, seeing if someone takes the bait. 
Yeah, I think Steel G smell this one though. They've got a Rek'Sai, so uh, they should actually have Smithy burrowed more because now TSM aren't moving. Oh, he doesn't check the right bud. Oh no, Afro does Ooh. not get snagged by Cocoon though, and that's gonna give it up. Now Smithy can see them all moving out of the brush, so right. safe for now. Yeah, TSM gonna abort that plan as they see Darshan moving up to the turret, so they were just using a little bit of time while Darshan was safely in vision and not hitting their inhibitor. Uh, try and go for that play, but now they have to send Hauntzer back to go answer that push. And uh, CLG actually bought a lot of time there, pushing that bottom lane up so far. It's going to take a while for those supers to work back down and pressure so that TSM can try and use the bottom inhibitor plus the Baron as a tug of war, you know, make CLG make a tough decision and uh, try and force them into face checking one of those Elise Cocoons into the Braum chain stuns. Well, TSM, we saw them set up for Baron quite well in game number one, but you can see just how topsy turvy this game has been. TSM now back out to a golden. It's actually a pretty significant one. It's the biggest one in this particular game so far. Yep. But Baron is alive. Elder Dragon's going to be up in a minute five. These next few minutes are crucial. Yeah. They also have uh, Aphromus completed that banner of command. So if they can hold out and get the inhibitor to respond, you know, this banner is doing a little bit to help. But here comes the teleport. Hauntzer's going in. Dick says the target. Hauntzer's going to dive in for it. Gets the face dive in again. And he's going to chase him down. Aphromus is going to piece him out. Hauntzer thinks about it. Does not take the journey. Yeah, very necessary flash there from Stixay. He is able to survive, but TSM moving up towards that Baron, and Darshan is trying to deal with that minion wave down bottom. Yeah, who is super late? Darshan gonna turn to that TP, but TSM might have claimed the Baron already. It's awfully low. Darshan's in for it! Since Garen does secure it now, X Smithy may be caught in the front side. Uh, Tempered Fade in there, but who are you gonna dive in and pop the zombies? X Smithy going way too aggressive. He should get taken down as Double if he's able to claim it. Biofrost in the backside though. He's getting chased out, but he is gonna live. Haunter unstoppable now as he takes out Darkon. Sticks they get popped as well. Hunter, off. the hero for TSM. Still chasing as well. Hui is going to dodge out of that Winter's Vibe, but the gravity field's down. They're going to try and turn this around. So much healing onto Hui. Aphromu actually takes a bio on the other side as well. Here's oh, Hunter Amanda. going off. He's going to take out one more on Afro. He's going to try and live in Hunter says, I don't think so. Gets stunned against the wall, but he's going to keep chasing Aphromu. Oh. He's the last one alive. Good start the again. Oh my tower. god! Hauntzer somehow lives, <laughs> and now he's dead. There's the ace. <laughs> the TSM. Oh my goodness, what a finish. TSM are going to clean up the series 2-0 to start off this split. Really well played for TSM, and they send the message. Double lift gets his wish to start the season, and they will clean it up 2-0. TSM showing up in both games there. They take down the defending champions. First game, very convincing. Second one, a lot more fighting back and forth in that mid game. But TSM win the one that counts and take it home. Hauntzer was just an absolute monster for TSM in both games this series up on the top side. Ends this one max level 18 along with Bjergsen. But man, 9, 1, and 7 on the Echo. In some ways, feels like he beat Dashan in his own game. In almost two games, actually. Had the Maokai into the trundle for game one, mm. handled the matchup relatively well after Darshan's early TP, and then Fiora, a really big split pusher and Duelist into an Echo, and Haunted just honestly manhandles Darshan a bit there. Yeah, and he was so crucial in their team fights as oh, well. Yeah. Uh, zoning with that parallel convergence got off a couple of really big stuns. And uh, TSM, very happy with the way they're starting. Biofrost there, yeah, the undefeated in the <laughs> LCS. And uh, a pretty good showing for the new kid there as well, I have to say. Biofrost looking awfully strong in both games there. Two very different champions, Karma in game one, Braum. Again, kind of standard stuff, but Biofrost certainly looks like he's already built that synergy with both Double Lift and his team. He was protecting his carries excellently well. When your carries are this good and these two men on your screen, that's probably a good place to be. Yeah, they only had that one hiccup in the bottom lane. They did get killed by Styx and Afro in the two versus two. Um, but man, yeah, overall, pretty good first showing for him. Afro was so close to having a flawless game on Vita as well, but unfortunately it all <laughs> fell down towards Afro the Afro was doing everything he possibly could to help CLG, but wasn't enough in the end. No, unfortunately.